y'all, this is Anna Alexander. Welcome to my basement where I should be watching the series finale of The Expanse, but I can't because my Amazon software is currently broken. Ads! So, um, Percy Jackson and the Olympians, it is. Why? Because Echo's over. And two, this was actually a Patreon pick on my page. It was a tie. One Piece and Percy Jackson. So I have been watching One Piece Patreon exclusive. So if you want to follow along, head over there. Lots of fun. Uh, but I'm excited to get to Percy Jackson. I'm interested to see what they do. I did not read the books. My kids have read the books. I've seen the movies. The movies were okay. I didn't hate them. There was lots of, what the, What are they doing? There was potential. There was potential. And I think that's what I'm excited about this as well is the potential of actually taking, was it eight, 10 episodes to tell the story age appropriately? Characters are now age appropriate. Yes, yes. So I'm ready to get to it. And I know you are for me as well. And if you, hey, if you're, this is your first time on my channel, hi, welcome. Please remember that everything I say going forward is just my opinion based on my own life experiences, research, observations. You and I have different lives, so we're going to view art specifically differently. And that's okay. That's why you like to watch these reaction videos. Because everybody is different and we're going to have a good time. So I've got the big cozy blanket. I've got a beverage. I hope you have your favorite beverage as well. And let's get to it. Look. I didn't want to be a half-blood. If you think you might be one of us, my advice is... Keep it in. <laughs> turn away while you still can. Turn away. Interesting phrase. Don't say I didn't warn you. So I kind of understand why they aged him up in the film. Because he can put an older teenager in more dangerous situations and people aren't going, eh, No, and how is he going to drive if he's 12? But this will be interesting to see. That's me, back in second grade. Why was I up there? I saw something. Oh, <laughs> sure. You said you saw something like that, you wind up in this guy's office. It's all in my imagination. It happened again. These impossible things. So real one minute, and then the next. Wow, but he drew that really well. I met Grover. <laughs> we had a lot in common. It felt good to talk about these things with Grover. You can almost believe they were imaginary. Weird, but harmless. Sure. Of course, I have a bunch of story questions I want to know the answers to now. But I'll wait. <laughs> See if they're answered. What you see here are our truest and deepest parts of yourselves. Is this Lance? Friends. No. Just somebody else with a very deep voice. <laughs> Choose one of the subjects you see here and describe it. Not just how it looks, but how it makes you feel. That's just a good exercise to do any time you go to the museum. How does it make you feel? If anything at all. I think one of the funniest things I've ever seen, and you know it if you've seen it. National Portrait Gallery, London. The David Beckham sleeping. <laughs> that makes you feel so many things. Is that why you named me after him? Because he was a hero? What makes you think he was a hero? Because he kills monsters. What makes you think that she was a monster? Yeah. Not everyone who looks like a monster is a monster. For we are unbreakable as long as we have each other. Percy? Mom? <laughs> I'm right here, sweetie. Mommy's here. <laughs> Don't be a dick. You will learn to control yourself. Do you understand me? <gasps> Make him a lolly. I believe in you. And I believe you'll be needing this. Hang on to that. Is a mighty instrument. This looks like just a regular ballpoint pen, not as fancy as the one from the film. I find it fascinating after all these years. Medusa's starting to get some understanding. Fascinating. Getting tired of her taking them out on me. 
Maybe it's time to do something about it. Really good I was talking, thinking dude. more like shoving Nancy in the nearest dumpster. No, there's one thing I know about bullies is that you should never, ever stand up to them. That doesn't sound right. Yeah. There are better places out there. Oh, jeez. Throw it back at her. Just shove it up her nose. Oh, he is a good two feet away from you, pumpkin. It was only a matter of time before we found you. Ooh. Ooh. Ooh, wow. Wow. <gasps> well, that was fast. That was quick. Where's Mrs. Dodds? There's no one here by that name. How are they going to explain this? Yet you have offered no explanation for how she ended up in that fountain, other than uh, I didn't touch Nancy. Why is he in such shadows? I want to see his face to see if it is what I think it is. Mr. Underwood. Do you have anything to add? Yes. It's gonna make up shit. Percy had told me earlier in the day that he wanted to get back at Nancy for all she'd done to us. Are you saying you saw Mr. Jackson assault Miss Bobo Finn? Can't protect him if he's mad at you. Yes, I did. Ooh. I didn't touch Nancy. I know you didn't. Then why don't you speak up for him? We know why, but why? Your principal called, and that's what he said. He said you got kicked out. You answer mom's cell? I answer whatever's ringing. So what'd you get kicked out for? Hmm? He said I attacked a kid on a field trip. Okay. All right. Okay. <laughs> you don't understand things Where's like... Where's my mom? I don't know. I don't know where your mom is. I'm not Nostradamus. It's an odd fall. <laughs> she communing with Poseidon? Oh, this looks very intimate. <laughs> like, we are... She is in a moment we should not be watching. Something happened to me. Something has been happening to me. I'm scared. Gabe! Mom. How anyone expects me to get any work done? Jesse and I are leaving for Montauk. Since when are you going to Montauk? Now. <laughs> right now. Pack your bag, let's go. I think his bag's already packed. Could he just take his suitcase from school? <laughs> Super easy. Run away, little hero, before you get hurt. Oh, oh, she's so sad. That's the one thing to consider if you're gonna take on a role or a movie or project where your main protagonist has an affinity for water is you're going to be constantly wet the whole time. Most of the time of shooting, you're going to be wet, <laughs> which means you'll be cold and uncomfortable. She kind of wish he was the son of Aries, so then he can at least be hot or warm or dry <laughs> most of the time. But lately, it hasn't felt like daydreaming. It's felt more real. And then we were at the museum and you saw something. Something that felt real to you but no one else could see. What did she say to you? And, and mom knew it was a she. How did you know it was a she? Do you know why we come to this cabin every year? 
How did you know about that thing I we saw? We come to this place every year because this is the place I met your father. What does my dad have to do with this? Everything! A long time ago, I met a man here on the beach. He like you do. From the moment I first saw him, I knew that he was a god. That I <laughs> had never met a man like him before. Because he was a god. <laughs> and then I realized he was unlike any man I had ever met before. He wasn't a man at all. He was a god. You fell in love with God? Like, uh, like, like Jesus? God. <laughs> a god, Percy. Mom, what's happening? You are a half-blood. This is crazy, okay? I'm not a god. There is something wrong with my brain. I understand that I'm weird. Believe me, I get it. So I wonder if this is the same conversation all parents and half gods have. Like, this is crazy. This is insane. If there's a few kids that go, yeah, got it. Understand. I'm on it. Of course I'm half god. Who's there? Mrs. Jackson? It's Grover. Wow. Grover got there fast. I asked how the night. You said we could all leave in the morning. Sorry, I'm early, but I didn't have any choice. You should have asked me before you... Whatever it is you're going to say, I don't want to hear it. Okay, so something's coming. Grover. <laughs> so something's coming to kill you. <laughs> Grover, why is there half a goat in your pants? Oh, it's... Oh, you didn't tell him about me? You're early. It's always an emotional roller coaster for a young demigod, so providing a support system is really. Who are you? And how old are you, really, kid? I'm a satyr. And I'm your protector. If I hadn't gotten you kicked out of school, you'd have never survived the night. I would chasing us now would have found you there easily. That thing that Dodds turned into, you saw it happen? Why didn't you say anything? I saw some of it. The mist kept her hidden even from us until it was too late. Mist? Us. He should have been focused on us, the word us. What else haven't you told me? No! Oh. Is that the Minotaur? <laughs> <laughs> he is next. He, he is brutal. He is relentless. He is wearing underpants. Would be so frightening. <laughs> He's wearing underpants. Sweet! <laughs> Everything has been training for what's still ahead of you. What's ahead of me, boys? Yeah, I'm actually 24. Hold on, please. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> but is Percy his first kid? His first half-blood he's had to protect? Well, that's gonna... I was gonna say that leaves... That's gonna leave a dent. But they've got more than a dent. It's trying to drive them into the car. Oh, the car hit it. That car didn't like go through it because it was misty and magical and whatnot. That car smashed it. Mm hmm. We're here. It's the boundary. No monsters can cross it. You're still quite a bit away. Grover, I am entrusting you to protect my son. Percy will be totally safe I can't swear it. What happens if he... Grover, keep him safe from anyone or anything that comes for him that wants to do harm. Like swears and something happens. Does he drop dead? I swear. Uh, don't look. Run. I gotta go now, sweetheart. Go? What do you mean, <laughs> go? I can't go with you. Listen to me. You are not broken. You're a miracle. And you are my son. You should have been running. We need to move. Say your heartfelt goodbye as you're running for your life. Smells half blood, that's what he's tracking, yeah? So if he smells you in two directions at once, maybe I can confuse him, buy us both a little time to get away. 
Is the Minotaur blind as well? Obviously that's not a kid. <laughs> as she turns to dust. Don't let her sacrifice go to waste, Percy. Hey kid, what makes him think he's going to be victorious and knows how this works? Oh jeez. Lucky shot. Oh jeez. kill him that would crush his spine if he got smashed into the tree trunk he stabbed him in the forehead with his own horn oh, that was that was something that was something hush and a bit He's waking everyone. Give him some space, please. Welcome to camp, Percy Jackson. Now, Mr. Bruner, why didn't you help get him to We've camp? Been expecting you. Why didn't you help get him to camp? <laughs> Mr. Bruner, couldn't have sent a car. <laughs> so far, fun start. That is. So it's always interesting watching another version of a story that you're familiar with. Because you try not to compare the two, but you can't help but to compare the two. And of course, little things and the surprises and whatnot as the story progresses, you already know what they are. So you look for them or you see them earlier than you should, I guess you can say. But because it is the beginning, <laughs> there's really not a whole lot to stay because all we're doing is what every story does is we're establishing our protagonists in their everyday world. So Percy's everyday world is he's just this kid who just feels like he's this daydreamer, dyslexic, head in the clouds. And what I found interesting was when his mom was saying goodbye to him and holding him by his head, which I do with my children when I'm saying goodbye, is that she kept saying, you're not broken. You're not broken. And that's an interesting, something I'm kind of looking forward to seeing, which we missed at the movie, was him, just how much he grew up believing he wasn't smart, he couldn't do anything, something was wrong with his head. How does he reconcile that? No, nothing was wrong with him. He was just different because of who his father is and how that in fact affects his choices, like how he makes his choices and doing things going forward. Will, will it, influ it should influence the story, but will it? <laughs> so episode one, I'm intrigued. I don't know why I'm doing this. I'm just thinking, I'm excited to see where we're going. At least I'm interested. Yeah, I wanna see, I wanna see how they tell the story next. So please be there with me. <laughs> As we start on this journey, no, it's always the beginning. So we're like, let's just go. So <laughs> in the meantime, you're going to please take care of yourselves. You're going to stretch if you haven't already. This is your reminder to go eat something substantial. Jelly bellies, Cheetos, <laughs> protein bars, okay, but it's not sufficient. Eat something substantial and then come back and watch the next video in the queue. So thanks again, y'all, and until next time.